Hello everyone and welcome back to another MRC chess game from the chess history from 1919. And in this chess game we have Hozerol Capablanca with the white pieces and his opponent is George Allen Thomas. Well, Capablanca's opponent was an interesting chess player. He was at the same time a professional badminton player and also a tennis player. So this is the picture of George Thomas. Uh, when he was playing badminton and he competed even in a Grand Slam tennis in a Grand Slam tennis tournament which was the Wimbledon he reached the semi-finals in Wimbledon in 1911 so this is very interesting imagine something like Roger Federer or Rafael Nadal after competing in Wimbledon or Ronald Garros uh, let's say they play with Magnus Carlsen in a professional chess tournament <laughs> interesting isn't it so this is very nice so he was a very formidable tennis player at the same time and also a pretty strong chess player so he played many times with Capablanca well when I say many times it is 12 times and he has only managed to defeat Capablanca for once and but actually his score against Capablanca was respectable he lost six times, Capablanca defeated Thomas six times and they drew four times, which is not bad at all against Capablanca, against the human chess machine, against the master of disaster, the master of the end games. So let's see what happened in this chess game from 1919. This is a musty chess game, a very, very interesting chess game, I repeat. So Capablanca who has the white pieces starts the game with e4 we have e5 and developing the pieces so we have the Rui Lopez d6 and it is transposing into the Berlin looking setup or this is the four knights defense in the Spanish game so d4 bishop to e7 castling bishop to d7 centralizing the rook knight takes on d4 knight takes e takes queen takes on d4 and then exchanging the bishops and simplifying the game, Capablanca says, that's fine by me. So he definitely likes to simplify the game. Maybe targeting the A pawn, so pushing the pawn, knight goes back, castling, bishop to g5, knight to d7. Also exchanging the bishops, it looks like they are going for the draw, but when you are playing against Capablanca, it is not that simple. Capablanca likes to simplify the game, but then... It is going to be very difficult for Capablanca's opponent in the endgame. So knight to d5, defending the queen and also defending the c pawn. Lifting the rook up, so Capablanca is going to use his rook. So it definitely looks like white is better in this position, white is more active. So knight to e5 and rook to g3 and Capablanca is targeting on g7. So pushing the pawn and... Of course, in this position, if you move the knight somewhere like a silly spot, not to g6, instead of g6, let's say knight to c6, then queen takes on g7, so eyeing the king with the queen and with the rook. So f6, pushing the pawn, knight goes back, queen to c3, Ooh. lifting the rook, rook to f7, f5 by Capablanca and he has more space in the king side. Queen to f8, queen to b3 by Jose Raul Capablanca. And this is actually a very scary move and Thomas actually played a very good move. He played king to h8. In this position, if defending the b-pawn, then knight takes on f6. So this was the threat. The rook and also the g pawn is pinned everything is pinned so after king to h8 knight goes back and white is winning easily white is a pawn up and being a pawn down against capablanca it, that means losing but in this position we have king to h8 so i'm pinning i'm pinning and then knight to f4 by capablanca not capturing the pawn but actually he is going for the checkmate. Instead of going for the material, Capablanca is going for the throat. Can you see the threat? Well, 
Thomas saw the threat and he played knight to e5. In this position, of course, if you play something like b6, then can you see the threat? Then knight to g6 and that's check. Forking the king and the queen, so you have to capture the knight if you don't want to lose the queen. And then checking the king. And this is the only move, capturing the pawn and whatnot. The rook is pinned, but more importantly, black is getting checkmated. So let's say pushing the pawn, this is getting checkmated, check and checkmate. Okay, so in this position, Capablanca is threatening to play knight to g6 and Thomas is defending with the knight. Knight goes back and defending on g6. Queen takes on b7, finally Capablanca captured the pawn, Ooh, rook to b8, and Capablanca captured one more pawn. Capablanca is two pawns up, so Thomas has to capture the pawn, Ooh, rook takes on b2, and in this position Capablanca, he played a bad move, believe it or not, rook to b Rook to b3 and this was a bad move by Capablanca. Well, which move was the better move in this position? Simply rook to c3 was the better move according to the computer chess engine, of course. Or knight to e6, look at this spot for the knight. And this is, it looks like this is crashing, this is looking dangerous. So after defending the queen, only then rook to c3 and actually white is doing excellent in this position. The queen can go back, attack the rook, rook must be defended. After defending the rook, white is simply a pawn up and also targeting the c pawn. White is winning, ladies and gentlemen. But the master of the endgames, Ozerol Capablanca played a very bad move. Rook to b3 and black simply captured the pawn and black is equalizing the material. Even Capablanca sometimes plays bad moves. But now doubling the rooks, it looks like Capablanca has a very dangerous attack, so he's threatening to play rook to b8, and then the queen is pinned, so Thomas played h6. And do you think rook to b8 is working in this position? Well, Capablanca is checking the king, knight to g6. Well, in this position, if rook to b8, can you see the surviving move for black? What would you do? How to survive in this position? It looks like this is game over. Because this is pinning the queen and winning the chess game on the spot. But it is not that simple, so can you guess the move for black? Well, the move is rook to c1. If you see this move, well done. So in this position, uh, what else? Capturing, but then capturing the rook. Okay, so uh, you can see that this is why Capablanca played knight to g6. This is forking the king and the queen, so knight has to be captured. Knight takes on g6. Capablanca captured back, attacking to rook, defending rook to e7. And also, this is defending against after rook to b8, rook can go back. So Capablanca played rook to b8. The queen is pinned. And this is the only sensible defense. But now Capablanca played queen to a8. And George Allen Thomas resigned. He resigned in this position. Interesting chess game by Capablanca. And let me show you the possible continuation why black resigned. If capturing the rook, then capturing back. Of course in this position, a white is threatening to capture the rook. And the queen is pinned, so... What else? Rook takes, rook takes, and the queen is pinned, and this is losing the queen. You can check the king as much as you can, but black is running out of checks, and this is all over for black. However, in this position, after queen to a8, George Allen Thomas should not resign in this position. So this is a key question for you. What would you do in this position? if you had the black pieces, so guess the surviving move for black. But chess is also a psychological game, so in this position, George Thomas thought that oh, this is definitely losing, especially against Capablanca, so he didn't fight, he didn't want to fight this 
losing looking battle, but actually, he had to look deeper in this position. Why Black should not resign in this position? Which move is the surviving move in this position for Black? So guess the best move for Black. I will give you 3 seconds starting from now. Can you see this move? Did you see this move? Rook takes on a2. This was the move. Rook takes on a2. And actually black is surviving in this position. Interesting isn't it? Because after queen takes on a2. Simply rook takes rook. Rook takes rook. Queen takes rook. And black. Simply black is a pawn up. But it is not 100% clear. Uh, because this king is not looking safe. So black has to be careful. But it is. The computer says. Uh, the chess engine says. This is for about equal. Uh, and in this position. Let's take it back. In this position. After rook takes. On a2. If capturing the rook. If rook takes rook attacking the queen. Then we have this surviving move. Rook takes on a8. Capturing the queen. Rook takes on f8. And black is surviving. Not just surviving. But actually in this variation. Black is winning. This is winning for black. And white is losing. Very interesting. But in this position. George Allen Thomas simply resigned. Unbelievable. He didn't see. Rook takes on a2. So his score. His respectable score against Capablanca. Would be even better. Had he seen. Who rook takes on a2 but as i said in their lifetime in their lifetime record he has only managed to defeat capablanca for once but this also doesn't mean that if rook takes on a2 he would he would be defeated capablanca maybe uh, the game would be a draw after this possible continuation it could be a draw so okay in this position maybe this move is a good move for white. This is a possibility. I don't know. So maybe maybe black is winning. But the computer says it is for about equal. So thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you next time with another interesting chess game from the chess history. So take care, stay safe and bye bye.